Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hey there before we go even further may I know what is time uh, now in London so that we can properly greet you um, it's currently 10.35am in London oh I see alright so good morning for her Okay, first of all, we would like to thank you so much for willing to spend your precious time with us in this interview session regarding our topic, which is campus life as a Malaysian student in London. Okay, let me introduce myself first. I'm Insana Sabrina Zulaika, and he's Muhammad Danish Arif. We are currently in our last semester studying in College Professional Marasa Iskandar for his diploma in English Communication. So... Can you introduce in detail about yourself and what course are you taking at your university now? Okay, my name is Faham Muhammad Sukri and I'm a final year student studying accounting and finance in the London School of Economics. Mm, so, total um, study time for my course is three years and I'm currently in my final year and my degree is going to end in like two months or so, actually. And after that, I'll be back to Malaysia for good. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, London is quite a big city. So, which part of London is it? Did you study? Oh, my uni is actually in Hoban. Hoban is, is central. It's pretty much the center of London. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. So, for this interview, we have prepared a series of questions just for you. And it is especially made for you. And don't you worry because the questions are related to your campus daily life and it's not really that hard. So, are you ready? Because both of us are ready. Give me up. I'm okay. ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you're ready, let's get into the first question. Okay. As we all know, London is one of the most beautiful tourist and industrial cities in the world where most people have a desire to go. Moreover, there's a lot of students willing to further their studies there, but it is very hard to achieve. My first question is, can you tell us your study journey until you succeed in furthering your studies in London? Okay, this is um, pretty, like, my study journey is pretty classic. You know, I applied for scholarships using my SPM results. Okay. Um, so, the scholarship that sent me here was Patronus. And so Petronas, what the um what the scholarship gave us was basically um two years of A level, which is preparation to go to the UK. And after that, during A level two, you choose uh, which uni you want to go. And LSE, London School of Economics, is one of my choices, obviously. And then, uh, using the A level result, you get into the uni, and then three years of uni, and then after that, I'll be bonded with Petronas for for five years oh, so, I yeah um so i guess the simple answer would just be scholarship by patronus uh, okay so um as uh, so you're using your spm result uh, to get the scholarship right so yes. if you don't mind can you share with us what is your spm result um <laughs> it was six six a plus and three e Wow. Mm. Wow, is oh. okay? Okay, so uh second question is yeah? finish. Okay, my second question is you know studying abroad is both exciting and challenging and in recent times many students are now wishing to study abroad, especially in Western countries, to further their studies. So my question is why do you choose to further your studies in London compared to other countries? To be to be fair, when I was in um, American TGB, um, we get a lot of exposures about scholarships overseas, local, like, and then we have this mock interview where like Maybank, yes, and Kazan, just come to our school and like interview the students, right? Um, I guess from there, I already know that hmm, I really want to go over to study, but I did not know yet like which country I wanted to go. So when I was applying for Petronas. To be honest, I didn't really have like any idea like which country to go. I just choose like, oh, UK sounds cool. So I guess like I'll apply for UK and then and I got the scholarship. And after that, um, you, during a level, like I said, you can choose which you need to go. And mm -hmm. in UK, you can go to like other places other than London as well. Like you can go to Warwick, you can go to um, Leeds, Bath. But 
I I guess I love the city life, so that's why I choose the uni in London. So yeah, I guess that's like the full story how how I ended up in London. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can agree no more. Okay, okay. okay. So um, the third question is okay, right? Let's move on to the next question. According to the UK Centre, two thousand eighteen, the application process for applying to UK university is very different other than most countries. Can you tell us what is the procedure for the students to apply their studies in London or to be general in the UK? Okay, so um, since I did a level, I couldn't really say for like IB and stuff like that because I only know my path. So for a level, but we have two years of studies, right? So in the first year, we apply for the universities. Uh, you can choose up to five universities to apply, and then. Since like we haven't finished our A level, so you kind of apply to the uni using your predicted grade. So you already got your grade for first year, but then the ultimate grade um is like a predicted grade by your teacher. So you apply using predicted grade to five unis and through this um online like website called UCAS. So yeah, it was like you just apply through the, through UCAS and. Thank God in my uni, uh, sorry, in my A-level preparation school, which, which was College Tanku Jafar, um, the teachers there were really helpful um, with the application. So, yeah, I think just apply first year in A-level, after that you get your uni offer, and then if if your second year result meets the uni's requirement, then you can get into the uni. Mm. Oh, okay, so for the... UCAS application, okay, it is viral on Twitter. I already uh see that watch that so many people using the application UCAS, right? So but um like as you said before you you go to the London by scholarship, but um I'm doing the research in the UCAS application. Most of them like just using self funding. We have to uh use our own money to go to the um to study abroad so how did you uh relate the scholarships from the patronage with the UCAS application how do you apply just apply um, so uh, application was just individual like patronage didn't like i guess like filling the form i did type in like like patronize sponsorship like especially for the fee paying part um but then and like there's some small ucas fee that patronize also covered um but other than that like i think the application i pretty much done it myself and the school helped me as well but yeah patronize didn't really um it wasn't really involved in the application process uh, okay. mm. yeah. all right so uh, my next question is, as we all know, every scholarship student who will be sent abroad will undergo training at their choosing university or college in Malaysia. So, can you tell us where you underwent the training before continuing your studies in London? Yes, like I mentioned just now, I did my A-level in an international, international school. It's called College Chongku Jabfar. It's located in Mantin, Greece, New Zealand. Uh-huh. So it's an international school. Um, we have like from Form 1 to 6 Form. Mm-hmm. And we are in the 6th Form because we're doing A-level there. And it took me two years to complete it. And then only I could fly to the UK. Um, so the difference between studying in Malaysia and London. In Malaysia, so all my life since I was 13, I've been to boarding school, right? So it's definitely a lot different than studying here where I'm just like all by myself. Mm. I think that is also something that I find it quite difficult to adjust. Like the study environment from like having your friends around, studying with friends, um, like group studies, you know, like friends are just so accessible you can ask them questions all the time to like just you by yourself and then like it's harder to hold yourself uncomfortable when you're used to that kind of environment so yeah I think it's a pretty interesting transition for me and I learned a lot from that too yeah Yeah. so um, Farha um, are you still able to survive to answer more questions from us 
Sure, go ahead. Okay, okay. Through my own uh, website reading, the biggest <coughs> factors when living in London are about the cost, especially when you're a foreign student. This is because the cost of living in the UK is relatively high. So based on your experience uh, as a student in London, how much does the cost of living there, including campus fee, rent, and food? Okay, like I mentioned, like I'm not self-funded. I'm um, sponsored by Patreon, so they have they covered the fees and everything, and they give us monthly allowance. So with that monthly allowance, we pay for rent and food. I would say that imagine rent takes up half of my monthly allowance. Ooh. So in London, the biggest like the biggest complaint uh, that people always come up with is the rent. The rent is very high and to get cheaper rent then you'll get like a run down house or like a you know not a very nice house like, and like it's like a trade-off that you have to make do you want to pay a bit more and get a nicer house or like you want to pay a bit less and get like a not a very nice house so i guess i choose the latter i want a nice house so i'm willing to pay a bit more but then um i find it fine because groceries in the uk on the other hand is cheap <clears throat> compared to Malaysia. Like oh, 20, 20 pounds, yeah, 20 pounds worth of groceries can last me two weeks. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's very cheap. Like one loaf of bread is, is one pound. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very cheap. Because, like, yeah. people are always saying that you keep using pound and the fee for the house, cost of living, it's very high. So, yeah, it's quite short. You say that mm. yeah, groceries are very cheap. cheap. But like, if you yeah. eat, if you eat out on the other hand, like, it can be expensive. It's usually just like ten pounds and above. So mm. I, I this I I think the smart way of living is like cooking la. Cooking really saves a lot. Mm. But then it's your time too. You're a student, then you have to manage your time well. You have to cook and you have to study. So. That's like another thing. Some people might just prefer to buy food from outside if they have extra money because like they don't have to spend time on cooking, right? But I don't have that much money, so cooking I have to cook. And okay. thank God the groceries are very cheap. Yeah. It's, it's surprising, right? Like yeah. you see, Hagen does um, ice cream in Malaysia, so expensive, right? But like we can get one cup for two point five pounds. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. And like this is not basic necessities, but like shopping in London are like cheaper than Malaysia too, and we've got nicer stuff here. So I really appreciate the shopping experience in London compared mm. to Malaysia. Like, mm. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, it's kind of high because pound are one of the highest currencies in the world, right? Mm. Yeah, but since like my allowance is in pounds, I don't really feel it. If you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, talking yeah, about allowances, like, how much did you get from Petronas per month? Like, uh, it's, it's in Malaysia currency. Oh, it's oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Okay, I'm okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, yeah. so? No, wait, if, if the next callers uh, feel that it's not enough, they can always ask more from Petronas. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Other than the cost of living, having friends all around the world are somewhat hard and burdensome at times. When we look into many aspects, uh, such as their attitude, compassion, etc. Um, based on your experience, my question is, how do you survive yourself on campus when it comes to any discussion about your learning presentation or any other things related to your academics with your international friends as they have different slang and also different understandings? What say you? So I guess like, I can relate to this a lot when it comes to my group project because then you you you're in a group with like people from all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. But then to be honest, this year it's all online because it's COVID, right? So I yeah. I have had my final year the whole year online. So all the meetings were done online, um, and all the work were done online. Um, based on that experience, um, I feel like it's fun to work with them because they can be smarter or they can be like helpful in other ways that you're not very good at 
it's like we complement each other better because like I might be better at, at something that they are not very good at. It's like it's like a nice balance when you're in a group of like a diverse people from like different different countries. Yeah. Mm, like you were asking about the slang, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I do have Malaysian slang, but then everyone has their own slang because we're all not from here. <laughs> so it's fine to like have a slang because we are all different in a way. And I think it's sometimes a bit difficult to to understand slangs from like some countries, but then after sometimes you, you kind of adapt and you kind of like adjust yourself yeah mm-hmm. it, it didn't take, take me very long and also they also try very hard to make themselves like can be understand by people you get I me mean? mm-hmm. yeah so, so like, in terms of uh, communication i don't think there was any problem uh, okay so from time to time uh you guys still work on each other to adapt but uh yeah. among yourself uh, okay all right Understood. Okay, next. In what ways would you like to get involved during your leisure time in your university? Do you have any interest in joining extracurricular activities? If yes, what kind of extracurricular activities did you join in your campus? As I often watch your story and post on Instagram, where did where you seem to be a very fit and active person, neither in Malaysia nor London. The, the last question I didn't really get. Oh, okay. The, the last uh, line. Uh, um, okay. If, uh, what kind of extracurricular activities did you join in your campus? Mm-hmm. And is it compulsory for you to join the activities, the extracurricular activities? Because I often watch that your story and post on Instagram where you seem to be a very fit person and active and very active, neither in Malaysia nor London. Okay. Um... So it is not compulsory at all to join anything because here the life is very free. You can even like, for LSE, you don't even have to go to lectures. It's like all recorded online. Um, so I just, I guess I join things that I'm interested in and I love singing. So since mm-hmm. first year, I've been joining like singing competitions in London or Recently, I also joined another singing competition that they held online, and that was fun. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then, like, at my unit, there's a Malaysian society organization where they hold a lot of events for Malaysian students. And I guess I just always join the event, like ice skating, Deepavali dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, during first year, I think I joined a lot of their events because it was I had a lot of time, and like, why not? But then. I think second year on what COVID happened, so we didn't really get to experience a lot. And then, and then you say I was fit. I think I just go to gym by myself. That was like outside uni. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think what is your big achievement in your extracurricular activities? Um, big achievements. I guess like I was one of the finalists in. Malaysian Voice 2018, and then mm. Jacqueline Victor was one of the judges, mm. and her assistant um, said to me that um, I could be a singer in Malaysia. Yeah, mm. okay. What, what song yeah. did you cover in that competition? Oh, I, I was singing, um, I was singing Rise Up by Andra Day. Oh. Andra Day, oh. if you know that song. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, as we all agree, a good student should be hardworking since it is hard to get good results and academic success without training and effort. And the question that I'm going to ask you is, what type of qualities do you think are important in order to become a standout student on your campus who performs in academics and to become a leader, especially when you are in a new surroundings? Just filled with smart students among yourself. Okay, I guess if you want to stand out, like academically, obviously you have to work hard for it, right? Especially now, you've got to have a lot of self discipline when no one's watching you study. Like, no one's asking you to do this homework or that. Like, it's mm-hmm. all on you. So, 
it requires a lot of self discipline to, to to be to get good results compared to high school because in high school it was just like you can be at that stage and just go with the flow and then suddenly oh you at at the end of the line and then it's done you know but here I I feel like I learn a lot in terms of like trying to discipline myself and it's a very valuable lesson I think um, and then like if you want to become more stand out I guess you can join um student organizations there are a lot of them in the UK like mm-hmm. I mentioned just now Malaysian society you can be one of their committee or you can join this um organization called UKEC where they help all Malaysian students in the UK there are a lot of organizations that you can join here which is nice so you can like experience experience the how to say you can like manage the, the students in London and then you can see like or how it is from like a bigger picture you know and like get to know more people have connections with more people i think that's like what's nice about london like the opportunities that it can offer you mm. yep. yeah um but i myself i'm not the type who likes to join i just like to stay like low key and i just like to like focus on my studies um and join events than be in those kind of organizations we have a lot actually and a lot of internship offers in london too not in just in london actually all over the uk um and other organizations i can think of is like icms um, mm. yeah all right so um how about the activities that you participate at your university i mean uh what are some of the most interesting ventures or campaigns that you have experienced in your campus in london if i'm going to be very honest um lsc huh lsc lsc holds probably a lot of events but they just kind of like send those event notifications through email so like if you don't check your email then probably you you're gonna miss the event you know what I mean I don't really join a lot of events in my uni but um uh, one of the most interesting activities is like every Thursday before covid they have like a piano like it's like performance mm-hmm. a piano concert and then I feel like that's very nice like every Thursday you can sort of just go to like a hall and watch people playing piano like a concert mm-hmm. and it's free uh one more thing is like what one more thing that lsc has is a wind down wednesday so like every wednesday they do some sort of activities to to cheer the students up mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's like midweek right it's yeah. midweek so like we need that boost and this one time they they bought us like a hedgehog mm-hmm. <laughs> they <laughs> they bought they bought like three hedgehog and let us play with it <laughs> That was oh. really cute, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, uh, in some of uh, your academic, academic career, right? Uh, have you ever received an award uh, for your excellence in your academic? Um, unfortunately, in my uni, you no. Know, the last award that I received was the Patrons Award. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. All yeah, right. Sure. Now let's move on to the other fact-checking questions. To know in more depth, it's authenticity. Dennis, can you please continue? Okay, the tenth question that I'm going to ask is um, sounds like according to the study UK 2021, English is spoken across the UK, but it is not the only native official language which is in London itself, and can be estimated that we can hear over three hundred languages. So, can you share your thoughts on what is the type of different languages used by the people in your campus? Um, so, when we're talking about campus, we're talking about class, right? And or maybe it's outside of class as well. Yeah. So, like in class, obviously the language used is English, but then like all of us kind of come from like different different background different countries not just the students and teachers so like you can say there are many accent um spoken by like um people in the campus but like if you're going to talk about language maybe for example if i'm with my friends and 
I'll speak a bit out of class and I've heard some people speaking like Chinese, not Chinese, Mandarin as well. Um, or like their own native language, like some European language I couldn't understand. So it is like there are a lot of languages spoken like outside of class, I can say in campus, but in class we only speak English um, because so that everyone understand and yeah, I would say we've got like very, very different accent and you don't feel alienated at all because it's not just you that got the accent, it's like other people as well. Um, and like even in my uni, LSE, we also offer like language courses. So like if mm -hmm. you want to take out like Spanish, for example, or like Mandarin, you can do that in my uni. So I think that's interesting. Oh, okay. So is Are there you learning any other languages then apart mm -hmm. from English? Well, I'm not taking out any language course, but um, there a uh, UKEC um, is holding a class where they teach you Mandarin and Tamil and also Jawi. Mm -hmm. So like, anyone is interested in learning those languages, they can like join. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, so is it that uh that we have learned now that your campus also provide like Jawi, right? So uh who's teaching the Jawi? Maybe oh, or Saza uh, from Malaysia or right? Uh, UKEC is a Malaysian uh, student organization. Oh. So it's not it's not under my uni, it's just like a, an organization that takes care mm. of uh, Malaysian students in the UK. So oh. yeah, my friend is actually teaching the Jawi. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Next, according to York Sanchon University 2020, to help you make the most of your university experience, it is good to meet British students too as they might meet up for a cup of coffee or tea and a chat as it is a British culture or they might go to the pub for a drink which does not have to be an alcoholic. So did you get the same treatment from your British friends when you first met them? In what ways did they approach you? Um, so I would like to agree that in order for you to experience like London or like wherever you are you have to meet or like get to know the locals um so I have a few British friends um they are not necessarily in my uni some like are working as well um and sometimes we can go out for a drink and then I'll order like a coke to be honest they don't really do tea they just usually go to a pub to like to chat or to have fun um, yeah I think if you want to I think it's fine to go and if you don't drink alcohol then just order like a coke it's fine they, they don't judge you or anything in in fact like they really like you for not drinking because like they know drinking is not really good for health right yeah. so they really wow well, you really don't drink huh and then like good for you so they don't judge um yeah very very, very nice actually mm. I, think, I think the locals here are very nice and very friendly if you make an effort to like uh, get to know them better and sometimes like they might not approach you first because they might be shy I feel like the locals here are like, more shy than like me <laughs> so I just yeah I usually just approach them first and try to make friends mm -hmm. and then, like if, if not for a drink then probably like lunch as well like you know like the, the lunch break within um in between classes so yeah i think that's a way of socializing in uni mm -hmm. like is there any like local people in london uh, maybe like around you maybe they still like have a racist um yeah oh. like racist to each other to, to other people um of course of course like um are we, are we talking about like students or just um locals in general um like students okay students yeah. like i i haven't got any like um racist treatment from them because obviously they are like educated and they can think of themselves like being racist is not like it's inappropriate right but mm -hmm. actually yesterday when i was out with my friend um for ifta um i've got like some racist remark from this person saying ni hao ni hao mm -hmm. and then like who's saying some words and then like chinese blah 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 and 
I'm just like, oh my god, this is so like immature. It's, yeah, and not just me has gotten that treatment. My friends have gotten it like as well before. Like the, the nihao, it's the classic nihao. It, I don't know when they're drunk, right? They always just they're not their best behavior, and it can be annoying. But it doesn't affect me that much, so I'm fine. But like for my friends, sometimes it can affect them a lot. So just I guess be careful and like. Especially when you're alone, just like get away from the person or like run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, finish. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, according to UCAS 2021, it's a very multicultural and dynamic country, as you won't be bored in London, and, and there is definitely something to suit everyone's taste, especially if you want to feel to be a part of a bigger community. Based on the statement. Is your campus life in London as interesting as the author mentioned? Yeah, so London it is a very diverse and multicultural country and because it's London, we have London holds so many events just like around London, like there's this winter like festival, there's this like um flower flower like house and you can go it's like it's fun, it's fun, it's you won't be bored if you really like want to put yourself out there if you really want to want to find things to do there are things to do in london like definitely so much things to offer sorry um so i actually agree with this author but then i'm not sure if like you want to feel a part of a bigger community you should be here because london is very big and it's like very individualistic um because very big you kind of like on your own and it's easy to feel like disconnected with people it's easy to just stay for a week and not talk to anyone like literally people won't when trying to find you like compared to when you're in like a smaller uni for example instead of warwick or like instead of bristol like the, the community is very small if you're gone for two three days people will look but here it's just too big, um, so it's easy to feel disconnected, and it's not just for students actually, it's for people as well. And so, like, if you want to be in London, you know, it's important to get like a support bubble or two or three very very close friends that can take care of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, what is the best festival that you have ever joined in London? Oh, best festival that I've ever joined um okay london also is a hot spot for concerts yeah. mm -hmm. so i guess the the most lit thing that i've ever joined in london is halsey concert mm -hmm. yeah that yeah. was really yeah and i got like the front line so really get to like see very close of her and then she comes down to the, to the audience and then i get to touch her as well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was really fun so if you're in london yeah co concerts all the way but then it's covid now that's why like people in london are having a hard time to kind of adjust because like it, it went from like having a lot of events to literally nothing and shops were closed restaurants you couldn't dine in mm -hmm. so yeah i guess london is fun when it's not locked down when it's locked down it can be quite like difficult to mm -hmm. live here mm -hmm. So the second last fact is, according to Wangka 2020, when crisis ends, students in the UK will know what it is the time to party when the night is still young. Okay, when most of the life as a student outside classes and assignment is going to involve with the party. And then, do you agree with the statement? If yes, have you ever joined the party with your friends as it is uh, a part of the UK university culture? Has it been practiced? uh by the students in your campus okay first question do i agree with the statement i do agree with the statement um they party weekday weekends they, they don't really care um, um because like there's this club in london it's called zoo where like lse students or like just london students just go there it's like student club so yeah they always go there after class 
and they love drinking right so like it's perfect for them um i have joined like a party in a club before um but just once so like probably i didn't get to like experience the culture if you get what i mean like i i don't get to experience like uh, why they i don't understand why they come here like five times a week because like to because like you come back home at like four in the morning and then like it mess up your sleep schedule and i i don't really like the whole mess um so has it been practiced by the students in my campus yeah even like for first year they do this like fresher event like in a club so it, it is practiced like widely i would say in my campus mm, okay, I see. so um like the famous uh you said that the famous club what if we call that zoo yeah oh, okay so can you tell me a little bit about the atmosphere in the club like what they do like they just drinking and dancing or what yeah they honestly oh, we are young right like we are young yeah. and then um so they go there definitely to have fun to drink and to dance and then they go there to like check girls out, like girls check boys out, you know, and then like get to know, like socialize. Yeah, they also go there to socialize. They make friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Most okay. students often spend their time partying. You know, what are other activities that London students often do other than partying, drinking? Um, to be honest, right, that's all they do like for for the locals that's all they do like they really party hard like until because they, they really find joy in that like i i understand why they do that because they find joy in doing that like yeah. having fun with friends it could be fun as well it's just like when you're sober maybe like i don't get the hype mm -hmm. you know um like for me it's a totally different case how i have fun is like cooking with friends and spending time with them like all that like, take cards it's, it's like a different life really we're talking about yeah okay. Okay. Mm. okay finally guys we've reached our last question okay Dennis. yeah according to yukuni 2019 you may find it difficult to communicate in english from time to time if it is not your first language so even if you are fluent in english you will find certain regional accents are sometimes difficult to understand Okay, my question is, do you face the same problem? And can you tell us in detail about the problem that you have faced? Okay. So, um, so English is not my first language. My first language is Malay. And yeah, I found it first, I found it hard at first um, to speak in English, especially like when I was doing A level, because in American TGB, people don't really converse in english at least i did not and come to ktj everyone was speaking english and i'm like okay this is quite hard because i could understand and i could speak a little bit but i wasn't fluent so that was like and then i i keep like pausing i keep i translate in my head before i speak it so that was like a like a learning process for me and i think that will also like make me improve a lot because i did not have any choice like i couldn't speak malay in the school so i was forced to speak english so i guess the learning process was was, was a bit faster and then that kind of prepped me for like uk and then coming here getting to know a local also sped up the process of like me being able to speak fluent english um so and then we're, we're asking about regional accent yeah, some accents are very hard to understand and it's very, I don't want to say annoying, but like it's very like, like a hassle when it, when it is your lecturer that's got like the, the difficult accent. Oh, do you have because one? what you want to learn like as, like as smooth as possible, right? But then your lecture got like a different accent that is hard to understand. Um, I guess you just have to sometimes listen really attentively to what he said and 
after some time you kind of get used to it but sometimes the accent really like like they, they just change the pronunciation of the whole word <laughs> and then like, yeah. you, you're like what <laughs> okay interesting this is and, and then you you kind of like catch oh this is how he or she pronounced this word and then like next time you can understand it yeah sometimes it's pretty different it, like, you 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 even asking yourself is this even english <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. um so yeah that's like i faced that problem with my lecture because like if with friends then you don't really care like fine it's fine if you don't understand a certain word but with lecture you, you have to understand everything right? so that was i faced um yeah i think i answered the question uh, okay so, um, how do you want to maintain the communication skills in order to adapt and at the same time to cultivate self-confidence to speak and understand what your international student friends are saying to further strengthen the relationship uh, within each other? Maintain communication skills. Um, yes. it definitely, you have to um, continue to speak in English, like mm -hmm. probably all the time. And now it's COVID, so you can't meet up with people that often. So probably like have a FaceTime with them. Because um, I really don't want to lose my fluency in English or like the accent that I have now. So yeah, just talk to them more often. Mm -hmm. And confident with like your own accent. Because I feel like even me and you guys have sort of a different accent, right? Like yeah. just pull it off. Just pull it off. Like if you say certain words a certain way just be confident with it and don't think that you need to like change the way you speak just be confident and to speak it definitely communicating so pretty much like any people like judge the way you speak in english at first is there any people yeah, yeah. oh that judge me yeah. i guess like, if they do judge me they won't tell me in the face right yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so far, no one has ever. Okay, but my close friend has said to me before, like, for her, improve your English. <laughs> because, like, because he wanted advice for me. So, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my yeah. best friend did that to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. there is, like, an encouragement for you, right? Yeah, okay, that was like a. Me. He meant the best. So. Mm -hmm. I, I took it I took it well, don't worry. Um mm -hmm. and now I think my English since compared to first year has improved quite a lot. And mm -hmm. all thanks to the locals that I've interacted with. Mm -hmm. Alright. You kind of get the nuances of the language, like you get the how they truly speak like in daily life. And it's kind of nice that you adapt it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Danish? Do you have any questions? Um, I think my questions have been answered well, so I don't have any. Right. What is the atmosphere like Ramadan in London? Atmosphere of Ramadan? Um, yeah. Because um, it's like COVID now, so I really don't know how like mm. other people are. So in my house, the atmosphere is just like, it's just like normal, we just study throughout the day and then we cook together for if the, we have a full house. So that, that There are no bazaar like Meiji, right? <laughs> no bazaar, maybe God, but like nowhere nearby. You have to travel a little bit and then I'm just like, uh, never mind later, like no time to go. <laughs> and, okay. and now you can eat in restaurants. So like yesterday I went Ifta outside, so that was nice. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it's already the end of our interview session. Okay, and that is the end of our, our interviewing session about the campus life of a religious student in London. Okay, um, thanks for meeting with us, Farah. We are. Yeah, yeah I have fun. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> we so are so pleasure. delighted and blessed to have you today and how you portrayed your daily routine as an overseas student. That sounds amazing and astonishing on how well you cope in a new environment. Whereas it sounds like great information for both of us as, as we didn't have any experiences studying outside Malaysia. Um, 
So maybe you could give us one last tip that you want to share or any words of encouragement or even motivational words for students that want to further their studies in the future? Mm, okay, so to those who want to apply for overseas scholarships, don't be scared, go for it, like apply to as many scholarships as possible and make sure that you ask your friends like from different different schools or what scholarships are available so that you don't miss out because you don't want to like miss out on the opportunity this is like like after spm spm is like where you set your life path for the next 10 years or like five years so it's like a very very important moment in your life if you think about it because five years is quite a big time of your life right yeah. so after SPM, make sure you know about the you are aware of the scholarship and apply apply to it. Go to interviews, do well, and if you get it, congratulations. Um, I guess like one tip that I would give is, is probably improve on your English because it's it's very important, especially if you go to like English speaking countries. Because if not, then it's it's gonna be hard for you to communicate with your classmates with your peers, then you want a good uni life, right? So Engl like English is very important. And then um, as you go through the process, like a level uni, don't be scared to put yourself out there. Don't be scared to join the societies. Don't be scared to join any clubs. Like it's, it's like, it's experience that it's the time that you cannot have back, you know, that you cannot like, I cannot go back in time and join that club that I wished I joined. So if you figure out how to join anything, go for it. Like, just don't think, go for it. Yeah, if it if it turns out bad, then at least you, you had some experience and you know what you don't like. If it turns out good, then at least you know what you like and probably you would join the similar societies in the future. And you know what you, how to say, like, you know what kind of person you are, like, you know what you want to fight in this world. What, what you know I fight for in this world so yeah um and find also like motivation to study like true motivation like for me my motivation is my family I really want to graduate well get good grades for my mom you know and if you have a got motivation it can feel like hard because it is hard this is not demotivating at all but like it can feel hard at times like during a level or during a degree like it, it's not all flowery and not all just like easy peasy lemon squeezy it is hard and it's like a different transition from your life because especially when you're used to boarding school so you can have a hard time so like if you don't have motivation it's gonna be a bit difficult i would say if you're down then there's nothing that can bring you up so find motivation why you want to go with this like, why do you wanna? Yeah, I think ha just, like having good English and having motivation. Mm -hmm. so that's personally yeah for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you so much for her for spending your time with us, and we do really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to hearing about you sooner or later. And don't hesitate to contact us, and we wish you all the best in your studies and future. And thank you so much thank for you. sharing. I have a question. Um, okay. So what what are you guys doing this for? Uh, for the SOC project, what we call Danish SOC. Um, it's it's actually our assignment, mm -hmm. which is what fact checking. Oh, fact checking assignment. Yeah. So uh, this assignment mm -hmm. wants to know the uh how true the culture is. Uh, what maybe uh, according to the topic. From like, uh, so. Oh, from your research to like the real experience. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I know it's, uh, yeah. Mm, so I think. But like, if you want to share like what I shared with other people as so, well, like I don't mind because I feel like they could learn a thing or two from me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, do you need to have anything to say to Faha? Mm, I think no. Okay, so yes. we can just end this session here. Okay, thank you, Farah. Yeah, thank, thank you, Farah. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay.